Hey, so I wanted to make this announcement video to show off uh, this engine that's going to be listed on the website um, here in the next couple of weeks. Um, I've done a version for the Rokon people. That'll be up first. Um, and and this, this video really applies to Rokons and go-karts, um, with the exception that the, the Rokon engine obviously turns standard rotation. And this is a go-kart engine, so um, or it's really a utility engine, but... You know, for this Facebook group's purposes, we're calling it a go-kart engine. Okay, so these will be on the website. Um, if you did the inflation calculator from today's prices back to 1960, uh, this will be the cheapest that this engine has ever been. Um, and this engine wasn't available back then, right? This is a stroker engine. So same uh, standard bore, you know, 2.531 inch, same standard piston, right? Um, and then the difference is the, uh, the crankshaft has just a, a little longer stroke. So, so let, I want to, I want to show you this engine, go over a couple of things, show you the difference between like this, that'll be available. And then something that would be like, you know, some of these you see in the back, like my, uh, more performance race ready builds. Okay. And it, and it's not to discourage you from buying one of these. In fact, uh, I would kind of prefer you buy one of these, uh, these are time consuming. I don't do a lot. Um, and then if we get more of these out into the world, number one, that's just more engines out there uh, for the future, you know, kids to find on eBay. Like I, like when I got into it a few years ago, um, my friend uh, Tim Womack gave me a little 510. And then I got on eBay, started searching, and just 820 stuff was, was not common. Um, not like it is now. If you Google West Bend 820, you'll know, you see all my videos, my website, all that stuff. It's everywhere now. So uh, let's look at this engine um, and then what you would get for $650, which again is like the cheapest ever. It's like half the price of one of, uh, you know, my, my built engines. So, uh, all right, it'll be uh, with recoil. All right, you got PVL coil, uh, PVL ignition, right? So you got top of the line quality parts, all right? Uh, as mentioned, you got uh, standard cylinder, and in a second we'll go over a couple differences. But you'll notice uh, no boost, no boost ports in this, so it's just a, a regular, you know, 820 block. Okay. Standard uh, West Bend reed cage with the stainless steel reeds. You know, those will last probably all of our lifetime um, and not break. But when we go over to the performance one, we'll you know we'll talk about reeds and and you know why we have uh, different options, All right? So this one um, is the stroker crank. So it's a three quarters inch uh, PTO uh, stock. All the ports are stock, nothing's been modified. Uh, stock head, All right? You get the same, you get the same connecting rod, All right? Just like all the other engines, same quality parts. Uh, John Wall, he took his, uh, bravely, uh, his connecting rod and, and piston, um, up to 13,000 RPMs and it held together, right? So, uh, that's kind of a, a testament to the, to the quality. It's the, the strongest design they've ever been. Um, those plus the 180,000 PSI, uh, rod bolts are more than enough for a utility engine and, you know, as proven in the, on the tracks, um, good enough for the, uh, the race ready engines. So a couple of the main differences, right? Um, with this one, you're going to have the caged bearings, right? Um, I've, I've measured these, I've done a video on it. It's on YouTube. Um, it demonstrates that, you know, these are built to the exact, uh, specs. They're within the specs of the, the, the Chrysler manual that, that, it, that it's always listed. Okay. And they've been tested up to 9,000 RPMs. So just buying this engine, just like this, you know, you could take it to the track. You could put it on your cart. Uh, you could take it up to the limit of this 9,000 RPM, uh, coil, this digital program coil, um, and not worry about the, the rod, the bearings, the piston, any of that stuff, right? You're good to go racing up to 9,000 RPMs when this kicks in. So this would be like the perfect engine, you know, if you wanted to do a, a stock class 
Um, obviously, it's an 894, right? It's not an 820. Uh, but if you wanted to make a stock class or just have like a just a nice utility engine for $650, literally the cheapest that it's ever been, right? This is going to be on the website, okay? And it'll come obviously bolted on. I just I took it off to to demonstrate, but you know this is what you'll get. Uh, no carburetor, um, six hundred fifty bucks, right? Uh, no muffler, no mount. Obviously, those accessories are available, but this is your engine. So let's look at the couple of differences. And um, you know why why I say I would like those put out uh, into the world more, and you buy them is because these something like these are are uh, time consuming. Um, they're more expensive to make, um, and then, you know, my, my time costs money as well. So that, that's part of the expensive price. Um, but this one, you know, the, the $650 one, you buy it, you run it, good to go. You want to hot rod it, get it race ready. You can do it yourself. You could send it to somebody like Jeff Brown, any of the 820 builders, uh, to take your stock engine and take it to the next level, right? So... This, if you can see in the back, is a boost ported cylinder, okay? So this would be one of the main differences between one of my racing engines uh, versus this uh, stock utility engine that I'm gonna have on the website, um, the boost ports, okay? So uh, that's a big difference, right? Um, your modified ports, right? I, I, you know, I, I didn't create this. I just I based this all off of uh, uh, like Dick Till and Ackerman, he talked about port shaping, round versus square, and well, where that helps the RPM range. So, uh, this configuration, right? These, uh, you can see it, right? These Siamese transfer ports, right? That we've that we've left round, right? Squared exhaust ports right and then the the added boost ports in the back of the cylinder right is it it's proven itself um at the the one of the the last vka events um a gentleman uh named roy fenwick he took one of my uh engines that i built for him boost ported right all that good stuff uh and you know you, you could ask the guys that were behind him uh, either him or the engine was fast, you know, it was a good combo between him and the, the, the built engine. So the, the difference cylinder wise is the porting. Okay. Flywheel. It's, it's all a PBL flywheel, but I take it to the machine shop, right? Machine off the, uh, the built in starter cup and then buy these, uh, from Jim from, uh, Viking carding, I think is what it is. Uh, these Jim starter uh, starter cups off eBay, right? Uh, here's one of the big differences. Okay, so uh, porting, that's a big difference. The ignition coil, coil, right? These are analog transistor coils. So it's just like your vintage coil, your uh, Wico or Wico coil, um, but minus the points. And instead, this little rectangular nub right here, that's like an electronic chip built into it to, to get rid of your points. Um, you can ask John Wall, he'll tell you, he just uh, installed one on his engine and he said he's never seen a spark like that. The, he, he couldn't get it with his points. Um, so I'm sure he'll take it out to a future event uh, and show you that, as well as the engine that I built for Roy, right? It, it came with that as well. Um, another difference, right? The industrial engine will have a dual ring piston, which I prefer. I, I think this is, uh, uh, better for an 820, right? A Mac is more of a speed engine. Uh, West Bend is more of a torque engine. Um, and then, you know, two rings obviously will give you more uh, more power, more compression. But a single ring piston will be better for speed, okay? So uh, the difference, industrial engine, two rings, one of my custom engines, single ring piston. Um, instead of the cage bearings, right? My, my racing engines, it'll have these needle needle bearings from Mike Berg, all right, as well as, you know, a couple of options, right? We got Eric Adams uh, fiberglass reeds, and then also these carbon fiber ones. It's kind of hard to see, but 
carbon fiber reeds versus uh, versus the stainless steel ones. Okay, so um, and then you know there's there's hop up performance stuff that I would put like on the eight twenty. You know, there's not really a point in putting one of these high compression heads on uh, like an eight ninety four uh, stroker engine because this you know it actually sits down into the cylinder. This is based off of the uh, the Horstman head Hemi chamber um, with a Dave Bombright copper head uh, upper design, but then the compression relief or compression release uh, relieved area uh, for somebody like a Rokon rider or just somebody that uh, like uh, like Keith Breeze. He has a couple of these, um, a couple of engines he's planning to start with a recoil instead of a starter. So that would be a good feature for that. So, you know, just kind of like you would expect, you know, from uh, a $1,200, $1,300, all the way up to $1,800, you know, engine that someone's custom building for you to, you know, the, the almost race ready stock, you know, factory engine for literally cheaper than you've ever seen it at any factory at any point. Okay, so um, I just wanted to, I wanted to go over that. I wanted to kind of show you, you know, the, the obviously there'll be a stuffer. Just, I wanted to show you the bottom, but um, I just wanted to kind of show you, you know, what I'm about to have, what is going to be on the website and what you can get. Um, and you're not hurting my feelings if you take it and hot rod it yourself, send it to Jeff, send it to, to whoever. Uh, there, there's plenty of guys out there with the skills, you know, to, to build them up. Uh, but, you know, do me a favor, do us a favor, do the community a favor, buy you an industrial engine uh, for 650 bucks, right? And, uh, and maybe take it to your track, start a class, see what you think of a, a stock engine and, and uh, how well it performs. Okay. So anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, you know, stay tuned. I'm always releasing new stuff. I got more mufflers coming. Uh, about to get another set of mounts. Um, I got the, uh, the dual, the dual intake, right? For the bottom. Um, and then the, the dual intake for the top of your engine that should be, or, you know, top front, whatever, uh, those should be ready in a couple of weeks. And then I'm also working on those Hartman uh, gears for the V12. I have to space them out a little bit different for these. So I'm working on a new gear for that. So thanks for watching. I will see y'all on Facebook.